concept E, we're going to be talking about the different properties or characteristics of a system at equilibrium and also discuss three types of equilibrium. So equilibrium means balance. Um, this is a rate of balance between two opposing changes. Um, the rate of the forward change is going to be equal to the rate of the reverse change. So in chemistry, we're often concerned with chemical equilibrium. Chemical reactions are usually reversible and occur in both directions. Both the forward and reverse reactions can happen at the same time and at the same rate. When a reaction is reversible, we use a double arrow, and this indicates that both the forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same time. So we can look at the production of ammonia gas by looking at the forward reaction of nitrogen plus hydrogen gas, giving us ammonia and being exothermic. The reverse reaction also happens simultaneously, that the ammonia particles are breaking down into nitrogen and hydrogen molecules. So we can show our equilibrium and reversible reaction by using the double arrow, representing that not only does nitrogen and hydrogen produce ammonia, ammonia is going to be breaking down into nitrogen and hydrogen gas at the same time. So this idea of equilibrium, you need to imagine walking up an escalator that's moving down. If you're able to walk fast enough, so the rate of you going up is the same or equal to the rate of the escalator going down, you've reached something called dynamic equilibrium. Someone standing far away is actually going to appear to them that you're just standing in place because you're walking up as fast as the escalator is going down. Um, however, both are in motion the whole time. This is that idea of dynamic equilibrium. So equilibrium is dynamic or always in motion. The molecules of the reactant are reacting to form molecules of the product at the same rate as those product molecules reversing and forming the molecules of the reactant. Equal rates make it only appear that the system is at standstill. Now equilibrium can only occur in a closed system, so a sealed container, um, something with a lid on it, um, so that it's set apart and sealed from the environment. As long as it's closed and it's held under the same conditions, equilibrium will remain that way forever. Now equilibrium occurs at different amounts of product and reactant. As the forward reaction begins to occur, the reverse reaction will continue as product is formed by that forward reaction. When rates are equal, equilibrium has occurred. So initially, depending on how much you're starting with, the forward or reverse reaction may be faster than the other. But when equilibrium is achieved, those rates must be equal to each other. Now this may occur at different concentrations of product and reactant. So while rates are equal, the amounts of product and reactant are simply constant, but not necessarily equal to each other. So this is a huge important concept here. Put a big star or highlight this. At equilibrium is the rates that are equal, not the amounts. And at equilibrium, the concentrations or amounts are constant, but not necessarily equal. So rates are equal, concentrations, are constant. So in these two charts, which are very common, the first one is looking at rate. As we can see here, initially we have a very fast forward rate and a slow reverse rate of reaction. As we continue through time, the forward rate slows down, our reverse rate speeds up, and eventually our rates are equal. When we look at the amount of reactants and products, we start with a lot of reactants, a lot of products, um, and as we use up our reactants, they're going to start to decrease, our products then start to increase, and over time as the forward and reverse reactions occur, the amounts become constant. So at equilibrium there's no change in the amounts, they become constant, and our rates are equal. So here are three types of equilibrium that you need to be aware of. The first one is a phase equilibrium. The rates of the forward phase change have to equal the rate of the reverse phase change. This must be in a closed container, and there's two or more phases that can coexist at this equilibrium. And then this is important, it always takes place at the phase change temperature. So if I have water molecules, um, and they're held at zero degrees Celsius, we're going to find that at that phase change temperature, the solid molecules are undergoing melting at the same rate or speed as the water liquid molecules undergo freezing. So here this picture we're actually looking at evaporating and condensing. So you can see the arrows right here in the middle. Um, if this is at equilibrium, the rate of evaporating is going to be the same as the rate of condensing at equilibrium. Now solution equilibrium, usually this tends to be solids and liquids. This is formed when the solution is saturated, and I would highlight saturated. So solutions at equilibrium must be saturated. 
meaning that the rate of dissolving is going to equal the reverse action, which is the rate of precipitating. So here the salt is initially put into water and begins dissolving. As time continues, we don't just have particles dissolving, we also have them precipitating back as a solid. Eventually the rate of the dissolving will be equal to the rate of precipitation, and when that occurs, equilibrium will have been reached. So if you place a salt cube into a beaker, um, that's in a saturated solution, what we'll see over time is that the shape will actually change even though from minute to minute it looks like nothing's occurring. And that's the idea that eventually that cube will be dissolving as it's also precipitating in different spots changing the shape. Now a solution in dynamic equilibrium will stay there unless it's affected by changing temperature. Temperature changes solubility which thus affects the solution equilibrium. Now, gases in liquids, if equilibrium can exist in a closed system, if we have dissolved gas that is allowed to um, evaporate and then also go back into solution, this equilibrium can be affected by both temperature and pressure because of the gases involved. And then finally, the one that we're going to be using a lot of is chemical equilibrium. The rate of our forward reaction has to be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Usually, initially, the forward rate is faster, well, over time, as we make and produce more products, we'll have um, those rates become equal to each other. So as a result of this, the concentrations or amounts are remain constant but not necessarily equal. And if we apply a stress to the system, like changing the temperature or the pressure or the amount of product or reactant, the system is going to change. So there's something we're going to be taking a look at called the Haber process or Haber process. This is based on the manufacturing of ammonia. And this is, goes back to the equation that we were looking at at the beginning of the lesson. The reaction produces ammonia, but some of the ammonia decomposes back to form its original elements. The rate of synthesis equals the rate of deposition or decomposition, um, and this system will be at equilibrium. However, usually in this process, we want to produce more ammonia. So we want to be able to find the right stresses that will slow down the rate of decomposition and increase the rate of synthesis. So tomorrow we're going to be taking a look at what those stresses may be and how they're going to affect these systems at equilibrium.